If I told you there's a creature that lands on your face when you're asleep, slips its long barbed tongue under your eyelid to scratch your eyeball, causing you to cry so that it can drink your tears, you may think I'm quoting some weird German fairy tale. But the animal I'm describing is all too real, and some of its close relatives have even developed a taste for human blood. The nightmare fuel that I'm describing is this guy. Just one of the many tear-drinking moths that are found all over the world. When thinking of animals to cover for the Halloween season, this was the first thing that came to mind. And there's a bunch of unsettling moth info that I just can't wait to subject you guys to today. So sit back, relax, and get ready to develop a new phobia as I talk about the terrifying moths that drink human tears. And blood. First things first, how in the flying hell does a moth develop the urge to try drinking from an eyeball? Well, many moths actually don't eat whatsoever and just go about their lives until they kind of starve to death. But those that do eat are purely liquid drinking animals. Instead of the complex mouth parts that you'll see in other insects, moths traded all that in for a giant straw to slurp up any nutritious liquid they may desire. Most of the time, it comes in the form of flower nectar, much like what butterflies eat. But some moths have made the switch from drinking sweet, delectable nectar to slurping up literal bird poop, urine, mud, and rotting flesh. So I guess if, you know, that's your baseline, tears really don't seem that gross whatsoever. But what exactly are the moths after when eating these things? Well, a big one is salt, and seeing how tears have 200 times more salt than other secretions like sweat, it makes sense to guzzle down some eye juice. But another big part of the equation is protein, something you can find a good amount of in tears, but not so much in mud puddles. And with that, it seems like an eyeball can provide all the nutrients a growing moth needs. But there is a problem. It's not like moths can just casually find tears to drink in the wild. They have to crawl into the face of a living animal and somehow insert a straw into their eye without being noticed. With some animals like deer and crocodiles, it's not like they can swat them away from their eyes, so the moths don't need to be subtle. But with small animals like birds where a moth is very noticeable, the moth targets them while they're asleep. Since birds have two sets of eyelids, it's a little harder to get to the goods, so some species have a barbed harpoon-like tongue to get through to those delicious tears. Since having that in your eye looks uncomfortable to say the least, some scientists believe these moths spit out an anesthetic so the birds don't feel what's going on and don't wake up. Which explains how some moths can drink our tears when we sleep. But okay, okay, surely there can't be that many moths that drink human tears, right? Well, as of 1992, 23 species have been found to partake in the forbidden liquid. And there's very likely more out there that have been found since. A good chunk of those 23 have been outed as lacrophagist, there's your word of the day, by living legend Hans Bonzinger, who has done most of the research on these bizarre animals. How does this man test to see if a moth drinks human tears? Well, by offering himself as tribute, of course. He has subjected his eyeballs to the poking and prodding of moth tongues several dozen times over the course of two decades, cataloging the species that do so and the different methods they use to harm harvest tears, some of which sounds like actual torture. Schaupsestes ludovice is a golden-colored moth found in Southeast Asia that usually targets cattle and mules. But once it finds some plump, juicy human eyeballs, its feeding strategy gets rather painful. It climbs up to the eye and using its hooked legs digs into the sensitive conjunctiva of the eye, causing some very unpleasant pain. Then it slips its tongue between the lower eyelid and eyeball, feeling like a, quote, particularly edgy grain of sand being rubbed between eye and lid. The clawing feet of this species causes the eye to tear up, giving it more food, and even when the author tightly closed his eye while the moth was still feeding, it wouldn't fly away. This species is one that Bonzinger describes as particularly painful, but the species that truly takes the cake for creepiest tear eater has to go to Lobocraspus grisifusa. This guy is also found in Southeast Asia and is a tear-drinking specialist, eating nothing else. They usually 
target water buffalo for their midnight meal, and they make it a social affair as they crowd around the eyes of these poor things. As many as 12 have been found feeding from one of their eyes at once, which sounds like an actual nightmare, especially because their feeding method is super painful. This moth is known to attack villagers at night, especially lumber workers who sleep outside. And unlike other moth species who will take their sweet time checking out the other parts of your body before casually strolling up to your eye, Lobocraspus beelines it immediately to the first human eye that it sees and unleashes a sharp, saw-shaped tongue that slashes around in the victim's eye. The author describes this feeling as, quote, a stinging pain like that produced by very fine pins accompanied by characteristic intermittent burning. The insect continued to suck from the eyelid from whence I felt extremely sharp pain, which could be compared with gradually penetrating stings. This moth will feed upon your eye for up to 30 minutes, sucking up every last tear you have to offer until it dips off into the night leaving you with massive red irritation lasting the next day. Yeah, this guy willingly let a moth do that to him for 30 minutes. That is freaking terrifying, but believe it or not, it gets worse because there's a moth that straight up pierces your skin and feeds on your blood. The aptly named Vampire Moths. There's at least eight species of these guys, ranging from Southeast Asia up to Japan, China, and Korea, and even making it as far north as Sweden and Finland. With a two-inch wing span it's the biggest blood-sucking insect, and when elephants and tapir don't satisfy its cravings, it turns to humans. Once it finds a nice, juicy person, it drills its hooked-shaped tongue into their flesh and sucks their blood for up to 20 minutes. Oddly enough, only the male moths do this, and it's all just to absorb salt from our bloodstream to pass on to a female when mating. Yeah, to the vampire moth, we're literally no better than a Walgreens where they can hurriedly pick up an anniversary present for their wife back home. Now I know all this talk of insects sucking up your bodily fluids is just getting you in the mood to see what it feels like to get fed upon. Well luckily, for just like anything in the world, some millennials have found a way to turn this into a form of art. As some people from the Center for Genomic Gastronomy made a restaurant where you are the menu as you go in to have your liquids eaten off you alive to feed their patrons of various tear-drinking moths. What a time to be alive. If you thought learning about these guys was creepy, keep posted on my other uploads this October since it's only getting scarier from here on out. Stay tuned.